Hey, if you want to know how the NAR settlement has changed the face of real estate for buyers and sellers in the market today, then check this out. Hi, if we haven't met yet, I'm Troy Sage, local realtor, and I'm dedicated to doing real estate differently. And in this video, we're going to dive into the ins and outs of how real estate is being handled since the NAR settlement. Before I begin, I need to disclose that I am not an attorney and I'm not giving you any legal advice. I'm a licensed professional in three states and I'm going to share with you my experience and what's happening day to day in the business right now in real estate. So let's get to it. So how did all of this start? Well, back in 2017, Josh Sitzer and his wife decided to sell their home in Kansas City. And unfortunately, they felt frustrated and unfair to have to pay a buyer's agent commission of 3%, which by the way, could have been negotiated or he could have sold for sale by owner, but that's for for another video. Now this lawsuit lasted for years and we have come to a head and there's finally an over $700 million settlement on the table that includes different brokerages, including the National Association of Realtors. So how is this changed real estate? Well, not only was it costly, it has also changed the way agency is and how contracts are written in the market today. Let's take this a step further. One of the first big changes that have gone into effect is that buyers now must sign agency and a buyer broker or buyer compensation agreement with an agent before the agent can actually show them homes. Basically, buyers are agreeing to pay a fee for service whether or not the seller is willing to pitch in on those concessions. This means as a buyer, be extra careful when choosing an agent because you may be responsible for their fee. It's a bit of a new twist. And in my opinion, it's not really fair to buyers to have to obligate themselves to pay an agent a fee without knowing what value that agent has created created for that particular buyer and if the agent has experience in negotiating to have their fees covered. But hey, that's just my opinion. What do you think about it? Let me know in the comments below. Another major change is that agents cannot advertise concessions or commissions to buyer's agents from the seller in the multiple listing service or anything connected to the National Association of Realtors. Sounds a bit confusing, right? Or kind of clear as mud, but let me try to clear this up just a little bit. Sellers are allowed to pay buyer's concessions just like they have in the past in regards to commissions or lender fees or any type of concessions a buyer asks for. It just can't be advertised anymore. So for buyers, this doesn't necessarily mean you have to come up with the extra money if you find a house and fall in love and there's no advertised concessions. It just means you have to work with a strong agent that is gonna structure an offer and ask a seller to cover these concessions. Now this also doesn't mean that sellers are gonna make more money when they sell their home. Value is created by the buyer on what they're willing to pay for a product or a home. And in real estate, the value is confirmed by an appraisal and appraisers haven't had any reason to not include or subtract commissions or concessions from any type of value in decades, which means that sellers won't necessarily make more money if they don't pay out concessions. It could absolutely hurt a seller if they're not willing to pay concessions if you have buyers that don't have the extra money. So what's really changed? Let's sum it up. Sellers can't advertise any type of commissions or concessions to a buyer's agent or for buyers in the MLS or anything connected to the National Association of Realtors. And for buyers, you have to sign an agreement with an agent before they can show you homes. And as a buyer, make sure you pick an agent that's gonna negotiate any type of fees that you may have in purchasing the home with the seller and the seller's agent. So what's the best practice right now? Well, for the most part, sellers are still paying concessions or commissions for the buyer, for their agent, and for lender's fee, but sellers are just not committing to a fee or an amount up front. As for buyers, the only thing that's really changed is that you're gonna have to sign a contract with an agent first and work with someone that's gonna negotiate and work with you on whatever their fees are. So you might be thinking, wasn't this entire case and the settlement supposed to make things more transparent? Transparent. Well, transparency is great, but the reality is it's made things a lot more confusing and it's made situations much more tense for buyers and sellers. My advice is continue down the path. As a seller, do what's best for you in regards to your property and your money in regards to what the market is yielding. And as a buyer, do your due diligence. Find an agent that knows the area that's going to work hard for you and it's going to show you everything you need to know about purchasing whatever home you're looking at. Let me know what you think in the comments. Is this settlement making things more transparent? Is it making it easier for you as a buyer or a seller to buy or sell a home? I want to 
to know what you think about what's going on in the industry right now. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to click subscribe and the bell so you're alerted every time I upload another video. And if you really want to know what's going on in the North Dallas, Texas area, check out some of these other videos.